Hello, I'm Papa Sean, and in March of 2023, I was so blessed to travel to Israel for the first time ever. I was a little concerned that my expectations were going to be way too high when embarking on this bucket list trip, but honestly, these 11 days in Israel surpassed all my expectations. Now, I've been a Christian since I was a child, so I've been reading the same Bible stories for 40 plus years. But being in Israel and walking where Bible history happened made the Bible come so much more alive to me. It was such an incredible experience that I will certainly never forget. Now, for these reviews, I will share a little bit about the places I visited and then tie in the relevant scriptures to each site. And when possible, I'll sprinkle in some lessons that we can all learn from as well. Now, on to the first review. Caesarea. Located along the coast of the Mediterranean Sea, Caesarea was built by King Herod the Great between 22 and 9 BC. Herod, known as a master builder, named Caesarea in honor of the Roman Emperor Caesar Augustus. It is also called Caesarea Maritima, meaning by the sea, to distinguish it from Caesarea Philippi, which is in northern Israel. During the time of Jesus, Caesarea was the capital of Israel during the Roman occupation. Now here is the Roman amphitheater, where gladiator fights would be held. Now, there's no evidence of Christians being killed here, but after the Jewish revolt against Rome in 66 to 70 AD, it is said that 2,500 Jewish captives were killed here in gladiator fights. Here is the Hippodrome, where Herod the Great created the Actian Games that were held every five years that included horse and chariot races. Now, before you take your seat at the Hippodrome, be sure to use the public toilets called Farika to relieve yourself. But caution, there's no toilet paper. Instead, you would have to use a tesorium, which is a stick with a sponge on the end of it. Just be sure when you're done to rinse it off before the next person uses it. Here are pictures of the garden, a collection of archaeological artifacts uncovered during the excavations at Caesarea. When the Romans would take over an area, they would use local materials to create the same style architecture found throughout the empire. Here is Herod the Great's palace that he built and extended out into the sea. This is an artist's rendition of what it might have looked like. A couple of events in the Book of Acts took place here that I will touch on at the end of this video. The highlight is Herod's swimming pool that still has some of the original tiles, which I think is so cool. Now, besides Caesarea housing a palace for the client kings like Herod, it was also the headquarters for the Roman procurators like Pontius Pilate. Now, prior to the 1960s, there was never any physical proof that Pilate, who condemned Jesus to death, ever existed apart from the accounts in the Gospels. But that all changed in 1961. A huge biblical archaeological find here in Caesarea was the Pilate Stone. This was a stone with an inscription dedicating a building probably a temple, to Caesar Tiberius, who was the stepson and successor of Caesar Augustus. It translates into English to the divine Augusti Tiberium, Pontius Pilate, prefect of Judah, has dedicated. Pictured here is the replica of the stone. The actual stone is located in the Israel Museum in Jerusalem. This was an important biblical find because this was the first physical evidence that Pilate, was in fact a real person, giving further validity that the Bible is real. Now, let's look at the events from the book of Acts that took place in Caesarea. The apostle Peter came here and met with the Roman centurion Cornelius who accepted Christ as Lord and Savior. Now the whole story can be found in Acts chapter 10 and chapter 11 verses 1 through 18. But this is the first time it was revealed that salvation is not just for the Jews. It is available for everyone. Yes, there were Samaritans who were half Jew and half Gentile in the Bible who accepted Jesus as Savior prior to this, like the Samaritan woman at the well and the many from her Samaritan town that you can see in John chapter 4, verses 1 through 42. But here in Caesarea, it was mandated by God that all can receive salvation through Jesus. This is huge to all of us that are not Jews. We all have the opportunity to be saved. Acts chapter 10, verse 1. At Caesarea, there was a man named Cornelius, a centurion in what was known as the Italian regiment. And in verse 24, the following day, he, being Peter, arrived in Caesarea. Cornelius was expecting them and had called together his relatives and close friends. After Cornelius and his family got saved and were baptized, 
probably in the Mediterranean Sea, Peter addressed the believers in Jerusalem about what had happened. Acts chapter 11, verse 18. When they heard this, they had no further objections and praised God, saying, So then, even to the Gentiles, God has granted repentance that leads to life. Next up, we have Philip the Evangelist that lived here and was visited by Paul. And while Paul was here, Agabus came from Judah and prophesied of Paul's upcoming arrest in Jerusalem. In Acts chapter 21, verse 8, Leaving the next day, we reached Caesarea and stayed at the house of Philip the Evangelist, one of the seven. And in verse 10, After we had been there a number of days, a prophet named Agabus came down from Judah. Coming over to us, he took Paul's belt, tied his own hands and feet with it, and said, The Holy Spirit says, In this way, the Jewish leaders in Jerusalem will bind the owner of this belt and hand him over to the Gentiles. Now, these events took place somewhere in the city of Caesarea, but the next two events took place in the palace that Herod the Great built. Herod Agrippa, who was the grandson of Herod the Great, went to the palace that his grandfather built and was killed by an angel of the Lord. In Acts chapter 12, verse 19, Then Herod went from Judah to Caesarea and stayed there. And in verse 21, On the appointed day, Herod, wearing his royal robes, sat on his throne and delivered a public address to the people. They shouted, This is the voice of a God, not of a man. Immediately, because Herod did not give praise to God, an angel of the Lord struck him down, and he was eaten by worms and died. And finally, Caesarea was the place where Paul was imprisoned for two years before being sent to Rome. In Acts chapter 23, 23 and 24, Then he, the Roman commander, called two of his centurions and ordered them, Get ready a detachment of 200 soldiers, 70 horsemen, and 200 spearmen to go to Caesarea at nine tonight. Provide horses for Paul so that he may be taken safely to Governor Felix. Now, here is where they believe Paul would have been meeting with Felix and later on Festus, where he appealed to Caesar. And here is the location of the possible prison where Paul would have been held in. It is believed to be here underground. Unfortunately, it was close to us when we were there and we weren't able to see it. But this is where Paul would have been held for those two years until he was eventually sent to Rome. Well, this concludes my review of Caesarea. I hope you enjoyed it. And coming up on the next reviews that I do, I'll be going through Megiddo, Dan, Caesarea Philippi, the Sea of Galilee, Capernaum, my baptism in the Jordan River, Qumran, the Dead Sea, Masada, and much, much more. Until next time, thanks again for watching, and God bless.